this video is going to be very interesting. I'm going to share some unique concept on supraclavicular brachial plexus block. If you have missed my last video, please go and check out from the i button. It will help you to understand this video better. So without wasting time, let's start our discussion on ultrasound guided modified parasagittal approach of subclavian perivascular brachial plexus block. These are almost similar to in-plane technique, except the supine position and 50 millimeter nerve block needle are adequate to accomplish this block. In this approach, the probe is placed cranial to the clavicle and perpendicular to the first rib. The angle of insonation is similar to viewing the ipsilateral great toe with a 30 degree lateral tilt. So place the probe posterior to the clavicle and make a 30 degree lateral tilt. That's all. You will get a nice view of brachial plexus like this. Here you can see the subclavian artery as an echoic round structure, subclavian vein and the brachial plexus. The neural elements can be seen as a small hypoechoic nodules with hyperechoic borders, giving a classic bunch of grip appearance. The first rib appears as a continuous hyperechoic white line from one end to another end of the ultrasound image. The outer plane needling technique offers easy manipulation of the needle, short travel distance and less discomfort to the awake patient. Please note the pleura is not exposed here to the needle like the way it is exposed in coronal oblique technique. The needle even if it reaches the corner pocket area, it will never crosses the first rib. Thus, removing the chances of puncturing the pleura which lies just beneath the rib. Okay, let's understand the difference between the two techniques. In conventional or coronal oblique technique, the probe is placed immediately cranial or posterior to the clavicle. Here, we are getting a transverse sectional view of subclavian artery and the brachial plexus and only a short segment of the rib as you can see here because the rib is not anatomically straight. Hence, the pleura is exposed here and here as you can see on the ultrasound image. In modified parasagittal approach, the probe is placed posterior to the clavicle and perpendicular to the first rib. Hence, we get almost a cross-sectional view of brachial plexus here and the pleura is also not exposed. As you can see here, we are seeing the first rib. While performing the left-sided brachial plexus block, the needle is directed away from the midline. Whereas on the right-sided block, even though the needle is going towards the midline, the rib and the probe acts as a barrier and prevent the pleural injury. This explanation is for the right-handed people like me. It will be exactly opposite for the south paws. The needle is inserted out of plane towards the cluster of the multiple divisions of brachial plexus contained within the hyperechoic facial sheath. Our strategy is to target the hyperechoic connective tissue or the facial sheath and hydrodissect with small bolus of local anesthetic as you can see here. The LA jet will move the hypoechoic neural elements away from the needle tip and helps in advancement of the tip as well as avoids the injury to the neural elements. Here multiple injections are performed to cover all the neural elements of brachial plexus. This is known as the subfacial intracluster injection of local anesthetic. The subfacial injection results in faster onset of surgical anesthesia and prolong the duration of post-operative analgesia as compared to extrafacial injection. Here you can see the post block scanning and spread of local anesthetic around the trunks and divisions. 
the needling technique plays an important role in safe performance of this technique. If proper insulation angle is maintained, it will be possible to visually align the needle pathway. Rest of the possible complications I have already discussed in my previous video. Last but not the least, please don't consider this video as any kind of recommendation. I have shared my understanding of subclavian perivascular brachial plexus block and the way we perform it at Ganga Hospital. I have learned this technique from my teachers and currently I am teaching this technique to my students. That's all for today. Catch you in the next video. Until then, keep blocking, keep rocking.